Hey there everybody, Matt Carter here. And Jessica Carter from CarterMatt.com. This video is our reaction to the premiere of ABC's For Life that just aired on Tuesday night. We have had a chance to sort of check it out. We've seen what's working, what's not mm -hmm. working so far. I think for the most part, it's working. I think it's a solid show. It's got a good premise, good cast. Yeah, I mean, premieres are always really tricky. It's mostly about just kind of looking into them and seeing if there's going to be good footing for other stuff. It's been a long time since I've seen a premiere that I'm just like, whoa, holy smokes, this is amazing. And that was lost. So, I mean, it's it's been a while. Yeah, it's hard to really get somebody that amped up after your first episode. But I think there's definitely enough here to make me interested in watching again. And yep. th that's really all I'm asking for. And it's got 50 Cent and as an executive producer. And I feel like yep. from Power... He knows about what his fans are looking for, mm -hmm. what they want, and I think we'll see that sort of manifest itself throughout this season. But mm -hmm. before we dive in any further, if you like this video, be sure to give us a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any other updates. Mm -hmm. Let's start by just sort of assessing the premise here, because Nicholas Pennick is the lead, and he is playing Aaron Wallace, who mm -hmm. is... This guy who manages to do, I think, something that a lot of people probably didn't even know that you could do, and that is become an attorney while also being incarcerated. Yeah, I had no idea. No, I, I, I think maybe somewhere in the back of my mind I'd heard about something like this, but I'd never, I, you never actually put the pieces together until you sort of see it right in front of you. Yeah, I just wasn't sure if you, that if it was like a conflict of interest that, that like that if you have a background that you are a criminal or yeah. you are charged with something that you weren't able to be a lawyer yeah. I just didn't know well and I think what they do a good job at in this premiere is sort of explaining how it's possible <laughs> yeah. I mean I think you could probably also make the argument that this premiere had a lot of explaining and not a lot of showing there was a lot of sort of exposition of oh, this is why this happened, and this is what... And it's the premiere, though. I think they kind of have to feel the need to set the table. Otherwise, you can't yeah. eat the food, so... Yeah, no, it's true. You really do. Yeah, so I, there was a lot of explaining, but we got a sense as to why and how Aaron Wallace is able to pull all this off. Apparently, the Vermont, Vermont bar, different set of rules. It gets yeah. the right people to sign off on him, and now here he is. He's got an opportunity to basically help these other prisoners and find a way to ensure that they have proper representation while at the same time, and this I think pretty clearly is going to be the arc over the course of this yeah. season, try to figure out how he can clear his own name. Yeah. I'm going to throw a comparison at you. Okay. Does this remind you a little bit of sort of the standard detective show where you've got like the, uh, the troubled detective or the police consultant that's trying to solve these crimes while also figuring out who murdered their wife yes. many years ago. Yeah, it definitely has that same sort of feel to it. But there's a very different sort of aspect to it in this particular case because he is someone that is behind bars. Yeah. And even as we saw sort of the case unfold in this particular episode, we saw him working with other prisoners to do things that were not exactly legal, like the forgeries and stuff like that. And it did come out in court that it was a fake, mm -hmm. but that he is working with different prisoners to do things that are not lawful to get things mm -hmm. done. At the same time, we saw the other, loyal do the other lawyer doing kind of the yeah. same thing. Mm -hmm. So it was... It was a cool way to see sort of the two separate sides and how we've got one who's behind bars and one who isn't doing the same types of things to be able to get the point across. I feel like that is the best thing about this show is that it is sort of exposing, I think, a lot of people to like the real truths about incarceration where you've got a lot of people who are behind bars and several of whom did not do what they were accused of doing and... It is a show, I think, about exposing the flaws in the justice system and also humanizing these people. Yep. You know, Aaron Wallace, he's still a person. <laughs> he still has a family, people he loves and cares about. And I think it really humanizes them, while at the same time also showing, you know, these people who are standing on top of their pedestals, these prosecutors. And yep. we certainly saw, you know, we saw the man responsible for much of what happened to Aaron in this episode. Yeah. And this is where I guess a little bit of my criticism of the show comes out because there was a lot of stuff that I really liked. I love the premise. 
I really like these actors. Um, I haven't seen the actor that plays Aaron before, so this is my first time really seeing him, and I really liked him. Yeah, he's really good. He's really good. And then we have Indira um, Varma. I'm probably saying her name wrong, but I really like her. If you've seen her on Luther, she was really good, and then, of course, she was on Game of Thrones, and that wasn't as good. But she seems to be really good <laughs> here, and I, I really like her. So it was nice to see a familiar face on yeah. the show. Yeah. Just for anyone who is a part of the Dorn storyline on Game of Thrones, they just they need to have a bounce back moment. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, they do. The Sand Snakes. I'm not really wasn't really looking yeah. for them, but um, yeah. Outside of that, it was. I guess I guess I know that they wanted to introduce sort of who the foil for Aaron is going to be, and that it's this prosecutor that he that you know put him away, and this is what's going yeah. on. He's going up to battle with it. All of that is fine, but I, I would have wanted to maybe meet him in court a little bit further into the season. Mm -hmm. I had a harder time buying into the idea that this is Aaron's first case. He's going up against this prosecutor that put him away, and he beats him. I get that it's ABC, and they want to give us mm -hmm. a hopeful end to this so that yeah. they can wrap it up really nicely. But I think they could have given Aaron hope. So that during this case, that even if he loses it, that there are a couple of stepping stones that he hits really well, that gets this other guy really nervous, that gives him that confidence so that the next time he sees him in court, mm -hmm. he's going to be able to beat him or get even further and further. One of the things I want to see is I want to watch Aaron's journey as a lawyer and watch him get better and better and i didn't expect him to necessarily just be like hit it out of the park first time home run and that i i wasn't a fan of that i didn't mind that as much just because i just mostly because i think i just expected it and so i didn't I, did. I didn't really think anything otherwise now i will say this and i've had this problem with a lot of other legal shows if aaron wins every case for the entirety of this season I will not be a fan of that because no lawyer goes up there and wins every single time. And yeah. I think you need to see him deal with a lot of adversity. You need to see, and it's almost sort of a, it's kind of like when you're in sports and you're coaching against someone else, eventually they're going to start to understand some of your tricks and then they're going to come up with sort of strategies to deal with those. I think the longer Aaron goes up against a lot of these same prosecutors, the more they're going to figure him out and the more they're going to yeah. counter him. And I think that's going to be kind of a fun part of this show, the sort of battle of wits that's going on between the two of them. And I like the fact that the client Aaron is representing mm -hmm. isn't exactly someone he would want to be friends with either because it's sort of showing not all, not all prisoners are clearly the same, but... Aaron wants to build this relationship, obviously, with the warden, dearest character, Safiva. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's Safiva or Sophia. There we go. Yeah. And uh, she wants to, and he wants to make sure that that bond continues forward. So he's willing to do some things and deal with some people who we wouldn't necessarily, you know, love to be in the same room with all the time. And it's cool to see a warden be a little bit different than what we've seen in so many different shows that revolve around prison yeah. that we've got a warden who is trying to work with the guards work with the prisoners to change things to make a difference to make it different yeah and that while not everybody wants a change that it's it's nice to start the show out with something like that yeah. because that's not something that we ever really get to see you know what I always think of when I just think of, like, typical TV warden? I haven't even seen all the show. I just think of Oz. Because I just think of, like, everything <laughs> terrible happening at all times. And the wardens Ooh. are always just going to be like, get back in your cell. And just be, like, really horrible, angry, violent people. So, That's a good pull. What a great show. <laughs> well, yeah. No, this is not the Oz reaction. I haven't seen that much of Oz. But, yeah. I, I like that this character, Sophia, is a little bit more nuanced. I kind of like that everyone is a little bit more nuanced. And... I do like that his family is also kind of in that same vein. I mean, we see Maria, who is, you know, his wife. He, you know, he loves her. They have this history, but, you know, she's presuming he's going to be there for life unless he finds a way to figure something out. Well, what I'm hoping for with this show more than anything else, because in general, sort of courtroom dramas, they're not really doing that great on TV. A lot of them have mm. been canceled a lot over the past few years. They're not my most favorite type of show out there, I'll just say that. But 
this show is not only focusing on just what's going on in court, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping that they're going to keep that up because that's some footing that I really yeah. liked about this show is that it's not only about him being a lawyer and it's not only about him representing people. It is also about his balance of life, yeah. his family, his balance of life with being in prison and then actually having opportunities to be outside of prison mm -hmm. and getting to go to court. There's so many different aspects to this show that I think have really solid footing that I am finding actually more interesting than the court stuff. And I think there's a chance it will probably kind of stay in that format because it seems like it's going to be semi-procedural where we're going to have kind of yeah. the case of the week structure. And sometimes that can get tiresome. I think it's just going to all depend on what the writers sort of come up with. But I know this from many years of watching Suits, which continues to be one of my favorite shows and I wish Harvey Specter was my friend. But I really, I, I just, I'm just being honest here. Okay, so I, I just w hope that they find a way to, even if they get kind of in that story of the week format, you continue to have fun interactions or interesting interactions mm -hmm. with the characters. You see this relationship between Aaron and his family. I think what was going on with his daughter was very interesting. Yeah, and I also want to see what his relationship is like with the guards. Because watching him come back and trash his cell and nobody came in there to be like, uh, yeah. what are you doing? Stop that. That could turn into a riot. Yeah. Stop with this! So, so none of that happened, and I thought that was really weird. You can't have a pilot for something without someone trashing something. That is a key component. Someone always has to trash something. And I am completely fine with that, but I feel like yeah. somebody should have stepped in and be like, dude, yeah. like, you're not allowed to do Probably that. Probably so. I mean, the, the reality here is I think for pilots, you all you really want is to have a good premise, yep. have some good characters, and you can sort of live with a couple of the things that are a little bit imperfect. Like, you know, maybe maybe it was too much for him to win the first case, like you said, or maybe there was too much of sort of, uh, I'm going to tell you this about this person and this about that, but, you know, it is also, you got to explain stuff to us. I think it's a solid start. The ratings were okay for the premiere. They weren't amazing, but they weren't terrible, so... I think ABC is going to at least give this show a chance. Yeah, and I think that as the show goes on, it's it's just going to people are going to get more into it. I think they're they've got some good supporting characters. They have a great lead. Yeah. I think as we start to get to know everybody, I think the ratings yeah. will level off. They will they will stick. Here's the big thing I wonder, and I think you even mentioned this to me earlier today. This is a show executive produced by Fifty Cent. Yep, it is airing on ABC. Yeah, that was yeah, that was something I was talking about yeah. earlier. I was I haven't seen Power, but I know enough about yeah. Power that I know that it's not really censored. And no, so not at all. Not at all. So now we're on ABC where it is very yeah. censored. And this is a story that could, can and will be told yeah. in a way that is censored. So I'm very curious to see what 50 Cent does with this show where he is going to be yeah. censored and has to tell a story in a very different way. Yeah. This could be very good for his career to be able to do something like that and show that he's versatile and that it's not just uncensored anything goes and that's all he can do yeah. that he can also do this and yeah. if he can do this then things are going to be really bright for him yeah i think he's and i got... mean they're going to be anyways because he's got well, book one two three four five yeah, six I know, he's got a billion right? books. yeah but him being able to do something like this will open more doors for him to be able to do pretty much anything yeah and i mean he's got a good showrunner behind the scenes here he's got good writers i think the, the structure of for life is set up really really well i think it's just going to be about creativity and finding ways to tell yeah. topical interesting stories that convey the messages without also some of the same storytelling you know devices that he had over on power including you know shorter runtime got to deal with commercials and all that yeah. other sort of stuff but i think it's a worthy premiere i think it's worth watching if you're kind of on the fence about it but uh yeah give it a try yeah give it a try we'll see exactly where it goes but you know we're gonna keep watching it and we're gonna keep seeing kind of where this show goes from here yeah. but let's hear from you guys about all this if you did watch for life what did you think about the premiere are you continuing to watch moving forward be sure to share in the comments below and if you do like this video be sure to give us a like subscribe and if you do want to support us more just check out that link in the description to the carter matt store and we'll see you here 
next time.